Welcome into the locker room. The last weekend of the league season is upon us. World Cup squads have been announced, omissions have been denounced, and my lot are here to give their take on it all. Coming up on the show, who won't be on the team playing to Russia but should be? We discuss the big names missing out, we'll make our FA Cup predictions, and we ask, what should Gigi do next? We'll look at life after Juventus for Buffon. We have Andres Cordero joining us again. Yeah, and I'm told is. that Ray Hudson did his own makeup tonight. I did, but I want to first of all wish uh, all our Muslim watchers uh, Ramadan Mubarak. And I want yeah. to wish all of the Haitian lads and lasses there out go. there happy Haitian Flag Day. How about that, eh? Hey. Oh, yeah, the Prince. The she started out with your makeup and I you know, went super heavy. Right. You know, I mean, <laughs> I'm, all, that. I'm all flush. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ray. <laughs> World Cup squads are being announced and some players have not made the final cut. Players like Jack Wilshire from England, who's been on Twitter to state he believes he should have been in the squad. Now, by contrast, Monaco's Ronnie Lopez, or Ronnie Lopes, as we like to call him here, didn't make the Portugal squad but still posted a classy response on social media saying he's not in the 23, but he will be part of the millions that will be the 12th man for his nation. So who for you is the biggest omission from the sides that have been announced. The letter of the two, Lopes. Ronnie Lopes from Portugal and Monaco. Why? Why? One, Eder, although a little bit of a different player, who scored the winner in the Euro 2016 against France, by the way, in the finals when Portugal won it, is not there. Nani, a white player, isn't there. And Lopes this year for Monaco has been a revelation. Let me see here. 13 goals, 8 assists. He can play on either wing. He can break you down. And he's a great work rate as well. Young, 22, 23, fearless. He could be another yeah. older Renato Sanchez, by the way. Whatever happened to him that started some games for Portugal. 10 changes, by the way, for Portugal. Fantastic. Do you know who's smiling? Giroud right now, because Lacazette is not going, baby. Okay, Tommy, let me ask you this. What? We're talking about Lopes. What about Gomes? <laughs> no, Andre Gomes. That's going to hurt uh, Portugal, isn't it? Ooh. All right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that, this yeah. is going to be such an inspiration to Portugal that Gomes isn't there. That's now brutal. we've got a great chance to go on and win it. You're <laughs> mean, Ray. Right? Ah, yeah. yeah, I'm just being what I say. You're He's doing not your a own player. makeup today. Not You're being mean about Andre so, Gomes. So someone who can, who can play fairly regularly for Barcelona isn't good enough to make the Fit? Portugal Ooh. squad. No. Fairly regular, like a yeah. three-legged yeah. giraffe. Yeah. 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 I'm just asking. Semedo isn't there. Yeah. All right, zero yeah, Berto won't, be, be, there, won't be there. Semedo, come on. Gary, who have you gone for? Uh, in the England squad, they have picked three goalkeepers who have no experience, not been to World Cups or Euros, and they've left out the one man who actually played nine qualifiers for them in this qualification, wow. Joe Hart. Um, I don't get it. I, I understand that you might have him as number two, and Jack Butlin starts, but you need him there for some experience. Why, why bring other goalkeepers who have never been to a World Cup before? And you might say, oh, well, he hasn't had a good season at West Ham. Jack Butlin got relegated with Stoke, so he hasn't had a great season but, either. But he was the MVP. He was the yeah. best player in Stoke. Oh, yeah, but he still conceded That's a very... whole but bunch of goals. He was playing behind a whole lot of crap, oh, Gary. Well, so is Joe at West Ham. But would Joe come as yeah. number three? Passed it. And is there not he, an argument to be made that if number three is not going to play anyway, you might as well give someone the experience of going to a He's saying he would, love, he would love to have been there. And I think if he, if he gets asked by Sarah, uh, Gareth Southgate, if you said you can either come as a number three and I want you to support and I want you to be there for the youngsters and I want right. you to help, but you have to be on our side or don't come. Mm. He would have, Joe would have said, absolutely, know, I'll go you, as your you, number three. Not a problem. You use a number three as for experience. A young yeah. player is not going to start. So I, I can see that. It's still a, a weird admission. It is. Not the it's only a real one, slap by the way. In the face. Southgate. We'll get two <laughs> Southgate. Goal Southgate's now. setting the standard there. This is a new squad, and I, I really like the way he's turned the page and he's left players like uh, the goalkeeper out of it, and he's trusting it. He's sticking with what got him there. It's wonderful. And for my player, Unfortunately, is Lalana. I think this this Arsenal, this Arsenal. Where did that come from? <laughs> this this England team. Arsenal. Much the same. Well, you're doing it again. Now. Just, uh, England <laughs> also finished first and second. So England, I've lost my train of thought. Lalana, Lalana. The Arsenal. Yeah. His situation. He doesn't play for Arsenal. I know. <laughs> okay, he's screwing me up, Ben. <laughs> right. So Lalana, uh, uh, the one exclusion for this England team is uh, lack of a, a, a real proper. 
midfield maestro. I think Lallana, when he's good, uh, is, is capable of that. He's class, um, and it's sad. He's injured, mm. Uh, mm. so they cannot really take him. But I would have loved to have seen him in. John Joe Selvey, another one for Newcastle, who I think could have uh, played his yeah. way into the game. Wilshire uh, maybe being the biggest. Wilshire board, maybe, board but I accept it. Yeah. The, 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 they're not ready. They're not right, and uh, they move on. And England's got a good, vibrant, young team, and I, I yeah. wish them all the best this right. time. Oh, but perfect. But if we're talking about biggest snubs and the backup goalkeeper for England comes up, we're in a wrong, we're in the wrong place. <laughs> the wrong, wrong place. Go on, for me, I think you can pick up several names from the French national team, and everybody wants to go to Karim Benzema. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to. I'm not going to touch that. Adrian Rabiot was snubs from this list, and I know that France have some very good central midfielders and N'Golo mm -hmm. Kante and Blaise Matuidi, but. The, the players that were in direct conflict with Rabiot for a spot were Steven Nzonzi, who's fine, and Corentin Tolisso, who's fine. I don't know that necessarily, just be, based on the characteristics, those guys are too different from what they've already got going to the team. And I think Rabiot gives them a, a different element, sure. a, a, sure. a metronome player in the middle. Granted, he's only got six caps for the French national team, and he hasn't reproduced his PSG form for France yet. I, I, but I do think they've been too sort of short leash with him because he's been brilliant this year for PSG. After Matuidi left, he started virtually every game for the biggest team in France. And he gets snubbed from where I thought he would have been one of the first players off the bench and instead doesn't make yeah. the squad. But it's tough. It's tough if you're Didier Deschamps because you've got a French squad that isn't, it's out there somewhere. So you're going to end up leaving a whole bunch. No matter how sure. you do this, you're going to leave off decent players. Benzema being another one you could look at and go, well, should he be playing? Right. Is he good enough to come in? Could I use him off the bench? Has he got experience? Or is he going to be a divisive player in the squad? So I think it's tough for some of these managers. But I just want to come back to England. I don't think playing a, bun a bunch of youngsters is a good idea. Mm. I really well, don't. I think he the, needs the experience. The, the past shows you that, well, what's he got to lose? I mean, compared <laughs> to the previous England yeah. e editions, now he's going with the young guns. He's got the faith in them. We'll oh, see if the risk, expectations eh? aren't yeah. too high. What the, the hell are risking, says. Gary? He they're, knows they're, the youngsters They're, they're well. playing with house money. They've got yeah. nothing. So and that's a great point. Hands. He used to be a coach over yeah. the under 21s. He knows the core group right. of the team. I like the direction as well. Yep. Energy, wow. let's go out. Not be stifled by all the pressure. Let's play. Absolutely. Right. And they're in an easy peasy <laughs> Japanese group. And so they better qualify Gary Bailey, <laughs> Mr. Well, English <laughs> International. Let me see. If we've got Ray to part in England, it's a good yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No. I was really hopeful in pulling for them. You Can't know? believe it. I really Can't yeah. believe it. There's a huge romantic event taking place in the capital of England tomorrow. The nation will stop as Chelsea and Manchester United. Hey, hey, I thought you were going to go off. Don't hey. you worry, not on this show. Who's going to need the win the most in this one? We are going to go round the table, get your predictions and get a little point for you. We have to start with you, Gary Bailey. Should be no surprise for us. Yeah, you even, you even, I'm surprised you even look at me for a prediction. Of course it has to be United, but here's a couple of reasons why. We're in very good form at the moment. Um, a lot better form than Chelsea. Um, we're very good de defensively, not giving much away. And we have a manager who's staying. So the players have a reason to play. They, ha they know they're playing for their places, they know they're playing for next season. Chelsea have a manager who's leaving, they know he's going. So that, if, they, if they play badly, it makes no difference to this particular manager. So I think it's all lining up for United to win. And if they win, it becomes a good enough season. If they lose, it's probably not been the best of seasons. Does he have to win this? Is there more pressure on him than doesn't there is on Antonio to. Conte? Uh, well, I mean, it, it, it would help him take the pressure off, but he doesn't have to. Finishing second's been OK, but it will make yeah. it a lot, lot easier around That's United eight. if he does get sold. Distant away. second. 19 points. Correct. Back second. second to Correct. second. Come on. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Right. Correct. There's, great, there's great clouds above both teams. Let's yeah. face it. Man United hasn't played good football. No. Squeezing out results. I've no idea how to go and line up exactly. And second, all of a sudden, is good enough. So give me a pick, because we've got the bar off. Oh, my, my, my pick right here will be uh, Chelsea. <laughs> and Wonder I think the Chelsea. midfield That's battle Chelsea, huh? midfield battle is going to be... you got Moses on the outside, yeah, Alonso yep. on the outside, Valencia, Young, where it's going to be win. One, Pogba has been good for you lately, you OK? Got that? Anybody watching this or not? Or am I just looking at myself, <laughs> OK? And Matic, hold Matic, it there we go. OK? Your well, favourite player the camera. There you go. versus you who? <laughs> Versus who? Kante. Versus Haz Haz Kante as well Kante. and Hazard. Yeah. Yeah. Midfield is where the battle is going to be won. 3-6-1 three, Chelsea, 3-4-3 three, three maybe by your boy uh, Mourinho. Both four, coaches four, four, have poorly performed Andres. this year. I think you're right that midfield is where the battle is going to be won, but there's a lot more destroyers in that midfield than there are creators. And so I, I fear this is going to be a bit of a chore just 
for the neutrals to watch these two teams sort of slug it out uh, in midfield. That aside, uh, who has more to win or lose here? Antonio Conte is leaving, and I don't think winning the FA Cup on his way out is going to secure his Chelsea legacy. I think yeah. that was secured when he won the uh, title a season ago. This is a very different side from the one a year ago. They never properly replaced Matic. He's now playing on the other side. They never um, really replaced um, Diego Costa, who just won the Europa League with Atletico Madrid. So I'm going Manchester United, who are a better team. Thank you, Drive. Stage, significantly more points. Have been better throughout the season. Not the most fun, but neither uh, has Conte's Chelsea been. Fair and the Newcastle fan over there, where you go? Right. Chelsea oh, got beat off Newcastle. 3 0. 3 0. Yeah. So I'm going with Chelsea. What? Because, because that if, means. Yeah, well, that means. Because really, <laughs> uh, yeah. Newcastle's of the better than Man United. That means you can't right. There you go. Thomas <laughs> took the words out of your mouth. I set you up for Absolutely. it. Absolutely. <laughs> so I'm going with uh, Hazard, with the Verve, and I'm going with uh, Kante over Pogba. I don't think Mourinho will release the hounds at all. I think Conte will. And I think it'll be in that attack. Uh, Chelsea's got to show up the defence for sure. But uh, two losing. Uh, uh, managers, they've, they've, not, won, losing they've managers? not won anything oh, all brutal. season. Win they've not won anything. So it's a, a question of who's got the biggest yeah. loser, and I think it'll well, be Mourinho. And, and I'm, and I'm going to give you the goal scorer because you'll like this. Yeah, Alexis I'm, Sanchez, oh, is I the goal winner. I just like to tell you all. I just like to tell you all that I have the casting vote because you can see we are even right now. Yep. I am not betting against Jose Mourinho yes, in the final. Yes, we go. I am okay. Going from Thank you. Squeak, 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 squeak. Still to come, Diego <laughs> Simeone's led Atleti to another title, but should he continue his legacy or start a new chapter at a new team? We'll discuss when we return. Welcome back to the locker room, Atletico Madrid's Europa League champions. And it's the second time that Diego Simeone has led his men to this trophy, almost four years to the day since he led them to La Liga glory too. Now we're hearing his name linked more and more with the Chelsea job. What should he do next, Andres? He should stick around. I'd like him if you want to talk about London and Chelsea. I'd rather he be the Arsene Wenger of Atletico Madrid and stay there for a good decade to come, I think few managers in history, I mean, over, over the last 10, 15 years, are as identifiable with their club as Diego Simeone is with his. You think of, um, you know, Fergie, Sir Alex Ferguson is an mm. example, Arsene Wenger is an example. After that, you don't get to too many names that fit their club the way that Diego Simeone fits this, with Atletico Madrid. And if there's a club in England that Simeone would fit in, would be Man United. I think Chelsea. No, more wow. Chelsea. I, I, I agree the, with you. Chelsea want to be more attacking no, as well. United do. I don't know. We well, just, they do. Frank, but Frank Lampard, Chelsea legend, likes yeah. the idea yeah. of Diego Simeone at Chelsea. You know what? I, 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 think, I think he needs to get out for himself because mm. playing in that league, and we were talking about it earlier, they're a fantastic team, Atleti. And what they have done winning the league is, is almost impossible because they're up against the two best teams in the world. So if he stays, every single season he's scraping just to stay close to the, the two giants. I think it's time for him to get out and go and, and make Chelsea into the best team in Europe because all the time he stays at Atleti, he will be third behind Real Madrid and Barca or second. Except season. he's currently stock. second ahead of his, Real Madrid. Yeah, but he's still not top though except for that one his season. Stock. When they beat Barcelona, where they right. tied Barcelona never on the last happen game of the again, season. That's it? just it. I don't, I don't think they're scraping by. I think they beat Barcelona to a La Liga title at the Camp Nou on the last day of the season. Yeah. Once. They won the Europa League six months or four and a half months into Diego Simeone's tenure. And they've been to two that's Champions League one, finals there. But can they repeat it? They lost to Real Madrid in both of those finals. You're playing La Liga and the Premier League. You're still going to be with Real Madrid. That's why I agree with you, Gary. It's time to go. They're the 13 richest club in the world based on revenue. Does he want to look at the elites each and every yeah, year and go and yeah. scrape? And you know what? Griezmann might be gone. Mm. Oblak might be gone as well. Do I have to mm. continue to reinvent and find those players? And by the way, they all come back again. Costa Torres, who by the way might come to MLS. I think it's time for him to go right now if he has the passion. And Chelsea would be the right, right team right now in terms of personnel and a few tweaks. He could do more and he will have a lot more money at his disposal to be successful and win a big trophy which he's not going to win with Atleti. We're actually All sticking set. in England because there are unconfirmed reports today that Mikel Arteta has agreed to become the next Arsenal manager. Is he a gamble worth taking for Arsenal? Um, uh, it's, it, this one is a tricky one. Um, it, it certainly, I don't think it's the right choice. I think there was a number of coaches that they should have won, but they did it the Arsenal way, the mm. cheap way. 
with all due respect, I think they did. You know, they went for the cheapest type of uh, asset that they can find. But he's a good coach. The word is out that this man is wonderful with the players. His tactical new. He's learned under the great Guardiola. But I'm looking at players like, uh, well, you know, Conte for me would be a better fit if he moved yeah. across London. That could happen. But Arteta. I think it, it would be a but he's, brave. He's, he's a number two, move, isn't he? He's a number certainly. two. It's Here's unproven. It, 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 well, I'm but, it. but let, let's just let's just have a look at number two. Carlos Quiros. Remember him, number yeah. two at Man United. Failed miserably at Real Madrid. Mm -hmm. Before that, Brian Kidd was a number two to Sir Alex Ferguson. Went to Blackburn. Failed. Some people are not number one. You're not the boss. You haven't got that ability. Plus, a lot of those players at Arsenal, or some of them anyway, were players with him. So you come is in as a coach. Smart to, but stop gap. I don't not think a stop so. gap. This is a brilliant move. Reason mm. being is Stan Kroenke owns Arsenal. Stan Kroenke, by the way, owns the LA Rams. The LA Rams hired a 32-year-old head coach who went to the playoffs in American football, and his son is the driving force of Ivan Gazidis. Ivan Gazidis is protecting the brand of football. And he's got Stan that Kroenke's address, son the is saying, football. I want a young, energetic guy, one that has played there 150 times. By the way, Wenger was a no name when he first came in, so this is brilliant for Arsenal. They keep their philosophy, their playing style, and they get energy. I mean, what, in the thing Wenger. is, before you yeah. jump in, whoever it is that's going to come into this Arsenal well, job, and I, I wonder if Arteta's got it in him, they're going to need yeah. to kick ass. They're going to have to go to Arsenal. They, they, they got away with too many soft touches for the last few seasons under Wenger. Arteta's got to come in and really stamp it. I don't care who's above him and who's beneath him. The, the situation going into this team is he has to put his brand on these players. Tough. The good, easy days are going away. Yeah. Exactly. Tough. It's tough. Now, I tell you someone who could. That type Allegri, of Allegri comes does, does in. Does Allegri want to come in and take Europa League? I football? don't know whether he'd want, he'd want to, but that would be the sort of manager you want no. to bring. Someone who's done it before, knows no. what to no. expect, has got results. There's, there's, a the difference, there's a difference between what we want to see happen and what we think will happen. And this, to me, is a feel good appointment. You want to root for Atleta to do well, you want to see them mm. play an, an attractive to brand of football, promoting their own guy, somebody who, who knows the club uh, quite well. It's different in, in practice when you the think real Arsenal world. have to finish in the top four, yeah. Arsenal have to yeah. return to the Champions League. Those are huge expectations by themselves, added even more so when you're replacing a legend. You yeah. don't want yeah. to be the one replacing Sir Alex Ferguson, yeah. you don't want to be the one replacing Pep Guardiola, you don't want to replace Arsene Wenger. This, See, this club could fall into an identity when, crisis when, and we don't, we don't have anything from Arteta's track record exactly. to suggest right. that exactly. he would have to fix it. When Boy, Moyes took over Sir Alex Ferguson, I don't think that squad was set up for Moyes to be successful with. Sure. I, I, it was an aging squad and it was starting to, to spiral down. That's not the case with Arteta. He's right. coming in to take this team up. There's talent there, there's uh, exceptional talent, but it needs to be coached. And evidently, from Listen. all the jungle drums that I'm hearing, and the word gets out in football, amongst players, amongst clubs, Arteta is highly, highly thought of As a coach, Manchester but not City. a manager. It's a difference, isn't no. it? No. That's no, all he needs to do at Arsenal, it, Gary. All the management, excuse me, Tommy, yeah. all, the, all the structure of Arsenal now is set. They've got the people who pick the players, they've got the ownership, they need a coach. Yeah. This Riz guy could do it. Less Spaniard points. from a tough part of yeah. Spain, by the way, this kid. Right. Believe Basque. me. Still yeah, still that's right, Ray Bass. For for you. You know. Okay, it's Major Bass, League Ray Wrestling Mouse. Friday night on B and Spots. Fun and wild entertainment that's not to be missed, just like the locker room, actually. <laughs> now, still to come here on the locker room, we'll be talking about Gianluigi Buffon, whose time with Juventus is coming to an end. But what's next for the superstar shot stopper? We'll be back after this to tell you. This segment is brought to you by Modelo Especial, brewed with a fighting spirit since 1925. Our international connection is brought to you by Modelo. Will Gianluigi Buffon be continuing his career away from Italy? Now, he says he's still undecided on what to do next, but there are reports that PSG are interested in his services and even Liverpool has been mentioned among the rumours. So, Gary, what's the next step for Gigi? If I was Gigi, I would retire. He's a legend of all legends. He's got the perfect match to bow out. Uh, say goodbye and go and move upstairs somewhere in Juventus and live the deserved wonderful life because 
Uh, if he goes and plays anywhere else at 40 years of age, will he ever be as good? And I don't even know if, if him, what I love about him is he's got this, this happiness and vibe. Uh, is, is Neymar going to be comfortable with him there? Will the Brazilians accept him? Do the French get motivated he, by him? This I is think, if he goes to PSG. If he goes to PSG. If he goes to PSG. It will be odd to see him outside of Serie A, yeah. to be real honest with you. Yeah. But Thomas Tuchel, if he can get him, he might be the link to get him to a championship or a Champions League final, so to speak. He's got experience. He's great in the locker room. He's got willpower. He wants to win this guy. He knows how to win as well. And some players need to be taught that way. I think he'll be great for Tuchel, both on and off the field. He might not start all the, all the time, but that's one position they need to get better. Get rid of Trap. Get rid of Ariola. And, and, and here you go, Mr. Buffon. You know, even before uh, the reports on the Parisian and Tuto Sport linked him with uh, Paris Saint-Germain, I know there have been other clubs as well. There were, Boca Juniors? There were, no chance. They were <laughs> the first ones here <laughs> for him, man. Not a chance. <laughs> there, were, there were hints in Buffon's own words. He said, not in Italy, so he would leave Serie A, so he wouldn't play against Juve. Good, uh, good, good, good not, shout. Not good in, shout, that. Sure. He could never go anywhere. Not, not a minor league. Mm -hmm. And, and right. so that suggests MLS is out. Right. Well, that also means some <laughs> European leagues well, are out. That, it suggests that there's two. There's the two biggest team trophies that a player can win are the World Cup and the Champions League. Buffon has the World Cup. He has not won the Champions League. And so then you go down the list of big clubs that have a chance to win the Champions League because no one went to Liverpool last summer thinking they were sure, going to sure, be playing in the sure, Champions League final. Sure. And so that Madrid have a goalkeeper. Barcelona have a goalkeeper. Uh, Bayern Munich have their goalkeeper. Uh, United, if you want to add them, have their goalkeeper. Yeah. Atletico Madrid, if you're like, arguably the best of the bunch. Harry Sijamar are the only place that you can upgrade the goalkeeper position, even though Areola has been good. Hasn't got a cope a Libertadores. Boca <laughs> Juniors yeah. need a goalkeeper badly. It would be perfect for him. He'd be able to play in the tournament. Do not go lightly into that dark light. Buffon, I'm with Thomas all the way down. Gary, you don't know what you're talking about. He has got two seasons in him, this man. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe you, you just want him to go yeah. into a happy retirement home, man. And what He's if they're bad seasons? What, what if what he plays badly? No, what if he gets knocked out and everybody in goes? That's not in, right. his, in his vocabulary. He's 40 what years of age. I right. don't care. He's brilliant. He's performed oh. brilliantly. And I don't agree with you either, Andy, no, that, that he's a flipping... He's not even in the top four in Serie A. Maybe top four. Certainly not top three he's for me. Th maybe. This, this past fun? season. Well, he wasn't the best goalkeeper at his club this I past season. I think he was. Do you think he's slowing down? Chesney was... Is he slowing down? I don't think he's slowing down. What this are you watching? Gary, maybe... This yes. much, but it's 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 what else he brings to the dance, totally. Thomas. For a coach, for a for a locker room, this is a man. This is a Caesar. Who's Where like Paris? comes another? Paris need that more so than any of the other clubs we've mentioned. Somebody like that. In PSG the room. be a good fit. Okay. Both would be better. Well, that was a good one to end on, wasn't it? Thank you so much for joining us on tonight's locker room. We will see you next time. Enjoy the weekend's games. This segment was brought to you by Modelo Especial, brewed with a fighting spirit since 1925.